Over the years and across dozens of videos, I've taught you how to study effectively and efficiently. From flashcards to test taking strategies to memorization techniques, they will absolutely improve your grades and school performance. However, these methods heavily rely on the ability to identify and target which information is important. If you've ever wondered how to do that, today is your lucky day. What's going on guys, Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. In this video, we'll go over a step-by-step -step process to help you identify the most important information in your classes or textbooks and how to best organize and study that information. The first step is to take a step back, no pun intended, and identify in a broader sense what goal you are trying to achieve. And I don't mean getting an A in organic chemistry. I'm referring to the micro goals each time you sit down to study or attend lecture. Allow me to explain. The issue that many students face is that every bit of information seems equally important. And when everything looks important, essentially nothing is. It's like highlighting an entire page of a textbook. You might as well have not highlighted anything at all. By instead identifying the main goals in a single study session, you'll be able to create a framework of general principles and core concepts in which you can fill in smaller details that are relevant. In doing so, you'll be able to filter out these less important details and focus on the critical areas that are most likely to show up on your test and ultimately help you earn a better grade. When identifying your goal at each study session, ask yourself, what is the topic of this chapter or lecture? What do I need to know in order to understand it? This practice sets a purpose to each study session or lecture. When you're first starting out, begin by skimming or pre-reading the chapter before you dive in, or by looking through the lecture slides before you attend lecture. Focus on the headings and subheadings, and pay close attention to the bolded words or phrases. This exercise primes you to identify which key concepts are most important. You want to create a mental scaffolding of sorts, where you have the foundational concepts as the core structure and you can fill in the relevant details where appropriate. As you get better at this, you'll be able to forego pre-reading and be able to better identify important information on the fly. But until then, start with pre-reading. In doing so, you'll be better equipped to identify your goal and set a purpose to each study session. Next, pay attention to how the information is portrayed. This one may seem obvious, but it is too frequently overlooked and underutilized by students. In lecture, pay attention to two factors from the professor. First, how long are they spending on a certain topic or idea? Usually, if a topic or concept has a greater percentage of class time allocated to it, it's more important. Second, are they repeating any concepts or ideas? If a professor says something multiple times, that is a reliable indicator that it is important and you need to know it for test day. And if you're reading a textbook, the same principles apply. Longer sections diving into a certain topic mean that you need to understand that concept. Similarly, if it is repeated or stated in multiple ways or explained from multiple angles, it's safe to assume it's something to prioritize. Now there are, of course, exceptions to this rule. Depending on the professor, they may choose to put something highly obscure on the test that didn't seem important and wasn't heavily emphasized. But don't worry too much about that, since it shouldn't really make that big of a difference to you in most cases. Such questions are usually uncommon, and if present, they're not going to be the difference between an A and a B. They're more likely to be the difference between an A and an A+. If you focus on the core and important principles, you'll get most of the way there. This is the Pareto Principle Applied, also known as the 80-20 rule. Focusing on the core 20% of information will get you 80% of the results you desire. Number three, organize the information. This one goes without saying. Effective note-taking and organization is critical. Organizing the information in a logical manner helps to separate and compartmentalize concepts, which ultimately helps not only recall, but also with identifying what information is important. I suggest using a nested outline format, where subconcepts are nested beneath larger concepts. 
Doing so allows you to easily identify the key concepts and subconcepts in any lecture or chapter. It's also important to note that your notes should not be verbatim of what the textbook or professor says. Rather, your notes should be shorter and in your own words. This is important not only for effective recall and for active learning reasons, but also for aiding you in identifying the key core concepts and most important information. There's a lot more to note taking, and I am considering doing an entire video on how to take notes most effectively. If you would like to see that video, leave a comment down below so I can gauge interest. Number four, condense the information. Remember that systems produce results, not our goals, not our desires, and not our dreams. Just telling yourself that you're going to focus on the important information is not going to cut it. You need to create the system that facilitates the results that you want. People often think of discipline or constraints as highly limiting, but when you use them intelligently and to your advantage, they are paradoxically freeing and help you much more than you would expect. So how do we create a system that helps us focus on the important high yield information and filter out the lower yield details? Condensing the information. I'm a big fan of condensed notes as an effective active learning method. By condensing the information, you're applying helpful constraints that force you to identify and focus on key pieces. If you're doing group study, use the Feynman technique to teach others in a highly interactive and efficient way. I've gone over exactly how to best practice this in my Feynman technique video. If you're studying alone, I recommend creating summary sheets, also known as condensed notes, which I've covered in my study less, study smart video. Number five, understand previous test patterns. If you've had this professor before or taken his or her other tests, this one should be much easier for you. Each professor has their own teaching and testing style, which should help you identify which pieces of information to focus on. But more often than not, you won't have previous experience with the professor. In these instances, there are a few ways to get a better idea of their style. First, speak with other friends or upperclassmen who have taken this professor's courses in the past. Get their opinion on teaching and testing styles. Secondly, see if you can get your hands on old copies of their exams. This not only is an excellent way to study for an upcoming test, remember active learning with practice problems, but it's also one of the best ways to see their testing style in action. Ask friends or check with your school, which may contain a bank of old tests. And number six, use the right study tool. Okay, so now you've identified which pieces of information are the most important. That's great, but it doesn't matter if you've identified all the important information if you don't know how to study it effectively. Not all information is created equal, not only in relative importance, but also in the best way to study that information. I've gone over how to use flashcards, how to use memory tricks, and several other study methods. Knowing how to use these techniques is just as important as knowing when to use these techniques. Here is a simple guideline. For conceptually heavy information, use condensed notes and practice problems. And for memorization heavy information, use flashcards, mnemonics, or the memory palace. This is a very rudimentary guideline, and there's obviously much more to it than that, but that's a topic for another video. If you found the information in this video helpful, please consider supporting us on Patreon. For as little as $2 per month, you'll get exclusive access to my video commentary where I provide additional details and insights that I wasn't able to include in each video. There's also an exclusive monthly Q&A, behind the scenes access, and you can even video chat with me and ask me anything you want. If you found these videos helpful and want to support me in creating more, your support goes a long way. But if you are strapped for cash, no pressure. You watching my YouTube videos is enough and I am incredibly grateful for that. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, press that like button. And if you weren't a fan, let me know with a thumbs down. New videos every Saturday morning, so make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell enabled. And I will see you guys in that next one.